Hello, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. At the conclusion of the last episode, you saw me finishing off my build of the Cube 1. Uh, and that is now in the building queue. We'll be seeing that very shortly. And this will hopefully be my third object to put into low carbon orbit. But it's not going to stay there. No, the mission is to actually recover it, return it back to the service, and recover it. That is to complete a contract. Uh, though, honestly, given my history with what was the Spider 1 come. Stay Putnik 2, which took a few tries to get it up there because of a number of... That was my second thing to go into orbit, but that took a few tries. Um, I don't know. I'm not counting any of these chickens before they are hatched. But right now, what you are seeing is the Striker SR-3. This is a sounding rocket. Its mission is just to go into the upper atmosphere and collect as much science as it can. It is running on a KOS ballistic script that I wrote, but I believe that script is very soon coming to an end. Okay, program's ended. We are purely ballistic now. Still not in the upper atmosphere. I would like my apoapsis to get pretty high. I'd love it not to get up to 70, though. Uh, it's definitely not going to get to 70. I think this is working pretty good. Now we're collecting all kinds of science. Ah, I think that worked pretty perfectly. We're going to go over a variety of biomes. And who knows, maybe in the upper part of the atmosphere I'll be able to engage these parachutes really high. You know what, sh do I have drogue chutes yet? All these things I'm not thinking about. I should check to see if I have drogue chutes, because they would be better. You can definitely engage them higher what's in the radiation scan still in the pressure scan that is the press map barometer according to this there's still 3.9 science available if I'm interpreting that right and that's my Geiger counter and it sees 0.8 science still available we only collected a small percentage of what's around so there's still a lot here I think I'm definitely gonna do one more of these I may have to actually fly this thing. I can fly it. Can't I? Oh, wait. I've got plasma blackout right now. Once I gain control, I should be able to actually fly this and try and sort of level it off a little bit. I should have actually been trying to level this off before. Now, we are done for science because we are now in the lower atmosphere. There we go. We can level off a bit. Slow down enough to get those parachutes to deploy. There we go. And now everything's fine. I got still telemetry flying over the deserts. So, yeah. There's still some stuff to get. It's transmitting it away. So going over different biomes is not a bad idea. Alright. I just do exactly that same thing again. Oh, wait, still. <laughs> there we go. Am I getting any splash down science? I am not, so this is recoverable. Okay, that worked out all right. My science situation not quite up enough, but I was just thinking. Because there are these little mint like this, 22 science, and that gives me my first like the the single crude the onion capsule I don't know I think I'm still better off just waiting on that a little bit it's 770 something kilograms definitely with my boosters I have now I cannot lift that into orbit soon though one part count has uh, done me some favors that, of course, is going to require the VAB to complete its upgrade. In the meantime, Union Rules, otherwise known as the R&R &R mod, have cleared Valentina for another mission. 
She has two contracts that she's performing here in the Juno M1. The first one is to get up to an altitude of at least 2,500 meters and then up to a speed of 220 meters per second, but keep your vertical speed less than 10 meters per second and hold that for five seconds. So again, it's a test of your ability to do a nice cruising flight. I had one of these last episode very similar. That time the speed was lower. So I, like, I kind of like these. I guess every time they just kind of up the speed and see how fast you can get this thing going in a level flight. The other contract is to get up to an altitude of 10 kilometers. And you know, both of these really kind of are pushing the capabilities of this little plane. Uh, I do have to start thinking about <laughs> starting to look at nodes. I'm not that far from unlocking the Weasley engine, so that will allow me to do something a little bit better, the Weasley jet. Now you might have noticed in all of this, I do have a goo aboard. Um, and I've used the goo a couple of times with this craft. Um, the goo is not biome specific. So I've used it, landed on the surface, and I've used it flying low. This plane can't get to a high altitude. But then I started thinking, you know what? I think splashdown is a different state than landed. So I thought, you know, we got to land. i got to land on the runway to complete these two contracts. But then why don't we take off again and uh, do a little splashdown? <laughs> and see if that doesn't, you know, get me some more goo science. I mean, what harm can there be? And by the way, some of you might be wondering as well, like, um, why are you not attaching the goo to any of your many uh, uncrewed uh, probes that you've been flying around and uh, sounding rockets? I mean, you know, we have sounding rockets that can get into the upper atmosphere. We have, we've gotten into orbit a couple of times now with satellites. Why not put a goo on it? Well, the issue is that you can't transmit the goo. You have to return it, so that's number one. Number two, though, is that the unmanned probes, as of right now, do not have the uh, sample slots. And goo generates a sample that needs to be stored in a slot. And only my crude, I guess this is a cockpit, not a cabin, or a capsule, but uh, only my crude ones have the slots. A later upgrade is coming up pretty soon on the tech tree does allow me to start taking samples with uncrewed missions but right now yeah it's only the Juno that can do these things. Okay we are closing in let's see what happens. And there we go we're collecting goo so splashdown most certainly is different than than uh, being on the surface, so we'll time warp away. You know, there is a contract out there for building a float plane. And you gotta land and then you gotta take off again. I gotta think about that. Might be a way to kinda hide the wheels in here so that they don't produce too much drag. Something worth exploring, but it won't be for this episode. Okay, so we got our sample. I was just thinking, can we do an E? Have I? I haven't had a Kerbal splash down yet. Okay, invalid situation. So let's see if we can get down on the wing here. No falling. There we go. I don't think I've been invalid situation for an EVA report. There we go. Do an EVA report. All right. Yes, so 2.7 science for that, a couple minutes. Oh, we are over 45 science now. That is another tier 4 node. Again, I was eyeing this small re-entry pod for only 22 science, but I don't, I, I don't have the booster to lift this thing into orbit, so I don't really see the point. But what I was looking at... Okay, we have basic science. That's a life support module. Okay, and the uh, Science Junior and ScanSat parts, which really mystery grew upgrade. Uh, I guess that increases the amount of uh, increased total amount of sample storage in the goo experiment, probably by one. And 
get unmanned experiment slots. That will allow me to do things like goo from probe bodies. That is probably useful. For uncrewed, here we have a lot of solar lights. High gain antennas, I don't think much of a point for that. This is what I was looking at. These are a small radial gyroscope. I'm pretty sure we're looking at small um, reaction wheels. Yeah, I think that'd be useful. A number of smart parts for communications, monitoring SRBs. Fires an event when attached SRB thrust drops to less than or equal to its mass. Okay. I think about that. <laughs> and an altimeter part. And oh, these are all thruster blocks. Nice. Small inline reaction wheels. Okay. Reaction wheels definitely pretty high. But maybe science. That's the bigger. Oh, these are oh retractable. Ooh, there's something. Is that a Weasley? That's the Weasley. I could build myself a better plane. There's something to think about too. Various containers, decouplers, docking ports, bigger RCS can. I don't think so. Valiant engine. The hammer SRB. Man, they're really punishing you for building. <laughs> I think I'm going to go with reaction wheels. Because I want to put... Yes, I think that's what I am going to do. And various RCS ports. Okay. Let's lock that. Alright, so that's that. But in the meantime, my cube is ready. Keep a close eye on electricity because that is definitely <laughs> a restriction on this thing. Let's take a look. There's only one contract we are worried about. And that is the orbit and recovery contract. You might recall from last episode, part count limitations kept me from putting a heat shield on. So instead I'm just going to keep the fairing attached. And then the fairing is going to deal with the re-entry heating. I think once my part count limitation is gone... I think I'll be able to build some pretty, like, I mean, we could start strapping clusters of those SRBs together and make reasonable sized boosters and get heavy payloads into the air once that, uh, once the vehicle assembly building has been upgraded. Which, how far away are we looking at still for the vehicle assembly building? Four days, so not this episode almost certainly next episode. Oh, SAS, you are beautiful. What a concept. <laughs> Look at you. Hold that vector for me. As soon as that periapsis is above 70 kilometers, we're cutting this. Just don't want that apoapsis to get too far away from me. It's the main thing. I have no idea how much fuel I got left. 49 meters per second. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is going to be so tight. Oh, there's my periapsis. Okay. I want this barely out of the atmosphere. Of course, we're drifting off our prograde vector now, so let's give us some thrust. Oh, I'm really concerned. Stop it. Orbit. Okay. We are drifting ever so slowly around. How much fuel do we got left? If I can just dip it right back into the atmosphere, this thing will eventually deorbit. I'll have no control as to where. No. Okay, we got to... Unfortunately, we have to use fuel to affect attitude. See if I can get this just to spin just a bit. Okay. Time warp, thank goodness. For oh, whoa, why did... 
Oh, I got SAS on! No, why would that matter? Let's try this again. Okay. <sighs> Shoot. Okay. 27 meters per second should be okay. I'm just gonna let this... Okay, now... I don't know, I started time warping and this stabilized. As soon as this gets to the retrograde, we're going to push. Okay, push. Yes! We're out of fuel, but we are 22 meters per second. That should be good. And with the fins on it, this should orient itself. Electricity is good. Oh, what we should do... Where are those parachutes? Let's maybe arm the parachute now. Should I, I should. I should arm the parachute now. Let's arm the parachute now. Parachute is armed. Because I'm worried I'm going to run out of electricity and thus not have control of this thing. That's seeming very likely now. But I don't want to... Jeb's ready. <laughs> oh yeah, we are going to run out of electricity. Absolutely. But I don't want to pop the fairing. So I think I'm going to lose the ability to pop the fairing and to you know what I should have done I'm gonna lose the ability to pop the fairing and stage but I ah I should have put the decoupler the decoupler unfortunately is on the inside of the fairing I should have put the coupler so that I would I could decouple and keep the fairing around the probe body well, we'll see what happens the parachute is armed, but it's inside the fairing. I suspect it will actually go through the fairing. I don't think that's going to be a problem. Of course, I'm not at all convinced. Where's the, where are the temperature gauges? There we go. Let's watch the temperature gauges. So those fins are getting sketchy. Of course, it's not what a fairing is really designed for. <laughs> Please work. Am I going to land in the water? It seems unlikely, doesn't it? That I'll be landing in the water. No, I'm going to be on land. Which is another thing. Another point again. Oh, that was something exploded. These are not the... Are they the fins exploding? I think they are, but... Yeah, they... Man, they're exploding... Large. <laughs> they usually just do little poofs. Okay. Still orienting this way, so that's good. Just lost some mass, which is good too. Still orienting the right way around. I don't see any temperature gauges on the fairing, which is really encouraging. I am worried that this is not... I'm worried it's not... staged. Oh no, don't do this to me! I got a feeling that's not deployed, and I think it's not giving me the option to deploy because I have no control, of course. Uh, I think... I think I'm in trouble. I think I'm in trouble. I think I staged it once, and it just popped into here, and I think I had to stage again. I should have done it from the context menu and just deployed there. That would have been safer. I am getting some overheating warnings on... Oh, 
Oh dear. This whole concept might be doomed anyway. There goes an engine, and there goes... Oh my gosh, the fairing just exploded. But I think it exploded just... <laughs> I think that fairing would have survived without the booster on the back. Oh, I lost the booster on the back. Wow, we've lost a lot of weight. If that, If this deploys... I'm golden, but I am almost sure it's not going to deploy. Alright, alright, I don't care. No, no, this is uh, an entirely doable mission. We are not, we are not abandoning hope. I think with the tiniest of modifications, this could work for me. The teeniest and tiniest of modifications, this can work for me. So what we're going to do, we're going to come up to here. We're going to take this booster off. We're going to take this decoupler off. Put the booster back. Put the decoupler back on there. That will make that part of it. I think that's a way to go. Um, not only can I not spare the part count for a battery, I think I can't spare the part count for a... For, a, uh, for the weight. <laughs> if it could barely achieve what I needed to achieve. Uh, we are going to definitely disengage that, disengage that, disengage that. And I think this will probably go here. I don't think the fairing will ever actually get disengaged. We are going to absolutely 100% do this again. How long is this going to take? Three days. Yes. You know what? Forget everything else. Leave them in their bays. I want my cube. All right. This is gonna work. This is gonna work. Everybody say it with me. This is gonna work. I got me a good feeling. This is the one. Okay, that's an orbit. I'm gonna let this drift around. Have 14 meters per second to dip that periapsis back down into the atmosphere. Electricity, of course, is good. This time, what I did too is just as I was about to cut the engines, I I pit, or I guess I yawed. Looking at this, well, with the orient, I guess with the orientation and the nav ball, I pitched. Uh, to give me a bit of a rotation so I don't have to waste any fuel just to reorient the vessel. And as soon as we get back to uh, retrograde, we're going to start burning and bring that periapsis back down into the atmosphere. That will also charge up our battery, but I know <laughs> it will not last. Okay, start burning again. That's it. Periapsis is 42, that is fine. Okay, let's get it SAS off to save electricity. We're going to arm this parachute this way. Deploy chute. Cannot deploy chute right now. Oh, don't be do it. don't do this to me. Okay, let's just do it by staging then. Stage. Stage again. And I did that. Are you seriously telling me that it won't let me pre-arm this? Alright. Um, sh shoot. I don't want to deploy you. I would like to dig it. Yeah, I can't disable the staging from here. Okay. All right. Cannot deploy whilst... Oh, because of the fairing. So I do have to... Crapatola, it will not let me deploy that parachute under the fairing. It's 
So I think I do have to deploy this fairing. This whole idea is not working. <laughs> oh, God dang it. Uh... And of course, that pro body surviving re-entry is pretty much zero, isn't it? All right, I'm going to have to, it won't let me deploy the chute. So I have to deploy the fairing. There's no way out because I'm gonna run out of electricity. So deploy the fairing, deploy the chute. It is now armed. The, this isn't gonna survive. <laughs> Kidding. Oh god dang dang bang -a -ling. <laughs> Oh come on, stop toying with me like this. There it goes. That's the end of that. Oh, but you gotta know we're not gonna end it here. And the funny thing is the VAB upgrade is actually only a few hours away, and I could wait for that to be upgraded, and that will open up a lot of parts for me, but Oh, we're so close. I really want this to work within the 30 part limit. So yeah, I went back into the VAB, started modifying, and you'll be seeing those modifications, well, very, very shortly. But while I was waiting for this to be built, while well, I did have a Striker SR3 that was just sitting in its bay, this mission pretty much exhausted all the high altitude science it could get. So we're probably looking here at the last flight of this particular sounding rocket. And of course, it wasn't long after that that a big moment was upon us. Dun, dun, uh. All right, three, two, one. Hey! <laughs> oh, so that dramatically increases 250 parts. I think I can handle staying under that. <laughs> And after that important event, the Juno was ready for, well, a rather less exciting mission to fly, and, well, I use that word fly, well, rather figuratively, because the contract was just to test the, jet, the Juno jet engine landed on Kerbin. There we go. You know, I think Jeb's sitting in the cockpit going, you know, Bill really could have done this. But with that done, well, it's time for round three with the QBE. And lift off. Okay, let's let's see how it goes. As you can see, I have made some changes. I've made some changes to the uh, actual probe itself, the Cube One probe that you will be uh, seeing in just a little bit once the fairing is gone. That did add parts, so I ended up and mass as well. So I had to free up some parts. So I freed up parts in one way. One, there are no more parachutes on these boosters, as you can see. We're about to lose a pair of them here. There they go. Um, so those won't be recovered. I also changed the fins to uh, these single part fins. Before I had a small wing with a control surface on it. These had the control surface built into them. I don't like them for this rocket because they are kind of big for this rocket. They're also heavier than what I had before, but with the extra booster, that's gonna make up for that. So with the extra booster, this thing can actually lift quite a lot. Go. Um, I never did work out what the payload to orbit is for this thing because I don't particularly like it. And now that the VAB is now upgraded, I can rebuild it and get it a little bit and hopefully build something even better than this. And uh, But this can lift quite a bit more into orbit than before. So getting into orbit, fingers crossed, shouldn't be an issue. It shouldn't be nearly as tight as it was before. Okay, there we go, there goes that one, and now of course we're on the Cogswell. This top stage, by the way, the core was exactly the same as before, this top stage is exactly the way it was before. Uh, just uh, slight differences, whoa, I'm seeing a staging issue, oh my gosh, how is this, I don't know how that happened, okay, is this right, fairing's gonna come first, and then we're gonna just, yes, oh, this, just wants to fail. Okay, where's our apoapsis at? 
Okay, once it's 75 kilometers, this should... There we go. Excellent. Time warp a little bit. Okay, coming close to the point where this script is going to end. Attitude lock disengaged. Program ended. So there we go. We are now, now we have to fly this thing. Now one thing that helps too is I'm going to be getting rid of this fairing. Well, I can get rid of it right about now. There we go. <laughs> Just kind of vanished, didn't it? Um, how close am I to Apple Apps? So maybe I should talk. Yeah, let's, let's wait till I've actually achieved my orbit and then I'll talk about the Pro. But losing that fairing actually gives me more Delta V at the top end too because I'm not carrying the weight of the fairing now while I'm doing the circularization. You know what? I should have put an engineer chip on here too just to make all of this stuff nicer, but... You know, for videos, I actually prefer not to always end up having to be in map view. Well, I should be starting to put engineer chips on everything now, I think. Closer, fire up again. Okay. Apoapsis carry out. Okay. Uh, let's just. There we go. That's an orbit. And we got some time to take a look at this now. So. Let's put it so that you can see the probe. Not done a lot. Still based on the cube. I changed the parachute to. Um, a drogue chute because it is 25 kilograms lighter than the other chute and I think for this tiny little thing I think it'll be more than adequate. I added obviously the battery here on the side so electricity shouldn't be an issue and a heat shield rather than using the fairing in an obscure and silly way <laughs> instead of that. Okay so we need to spin this puppy around so let's do that. Uh, again, I didn't, let's, let's put it in a bit of a spin, so we need to give a little bit of thrust. A little bit more. Still 216 meters per second of delta V left in this stage, so why? That is so weird. You know, persistent rotation should... There. Persistent rotation shouldn't when I time warp, I shouldn't stop the rotation like that. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. And similarly, SAS, I have the SAS on, but that shouldn't matter because there's no reaction wheels. And if I'm not applying thrust, SAS doesn't do anything. Okay, we're coming. Coming, coming, coming. Let's start thrusting. Okay, we're going to get our, well, we'll get our periaps. Actually, let's even consider where we want to go down. I didn't really think about that. Let's actually do quite a bit here. I wouldn't mind putting ourselves down into the water because I have so much delta V. Oh, I am out of fuel. That's okay. Map view. Okay, let's uh, actually take this opportunity to stage. And let's also take this opportunity to arm this parachute in case for some reason we end up losing control. We should be good. No, oh, we're going this way. <laughs> okay, we are entering the atmosphere. This should this should orient itself with the heat shield forward. Now, as far as the heat shield goes, I've taken off most of the ablator to save weight, but this should be more than adequate. All right, nicely settling down. We've lost signal, but that's because of plasma blackout. That was to be expected. I'm hoping we might actually hit the water good. 
There's our booster down below us. Oh, little explosion. Puff, puff, puff. No heat shield for you. Uh, I think we are going to be just onto the shores here. Well, maybe not. We'll see where, where we end up. It's going to be close. <laughs> Oh, we got our signal again. Hopefully, though, from here on in, we don't really need it. There goes our drogue shoot! Oh, this is getting me excited! That is set here. I don't need this. It's set at an altitude of 2,500, it's going to... And if we are going too fast, if not tested the descent piece of this, we still have the option of jettisoning our heat shield. Wow, we I think we are going in the water, but that is really close. That's okay. And full deploy, and then we'll see what our velocity will get down to. Ooh, it's a little faster than I would like. <laughs> well, I, I don't even want to think how light this is. It's just a single probe body, for goodness sakes, and a couple of stuff stuck to it. But I think we will jettison this heat shield. That saves us some weight and reduces our speed. Wow, we are coming down harder than I would have thought. Maybe switching to this drogue shoot wasn't the best of ideas. Oh, we're gonna find out pretty soon. Yes! Yes! <laughs> it survived. Floating here contract is complete. Oh, finally. <laughs> but you know, now with my improved VAB, hopefully we will be able to go you know, bigger, faster, higher. Maybe you get some Kerbals in action in space as well. Who the heck knows? But in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.